So I'm Samuel Ortiz. Uh, I work for Rivos, and today I'm going to talk about station and verification. And um, this morning we've we've been talking a lot about uh, attestation, but uh, well, actually we we haven't talked a lot about it, attestation. We kind of eluded the, the the topic and say, yeah, there's some attestation going on somewhere. And um, I'm I'm part of the confidential containers project. And we worked a lot on the node side on how you get the attestation reports, how you um, how you you uh, measure things, how you well the, the whole flow in the node side. And then at some point we were like, okay, we have this attestation report, and we need to send it somewhere because we need. Uh, for those who are not familiar with confidential containers, it's confidential computing for containers, and basically we run the the whole confidential container dance to get a container image encryption key back from a key brokering service uh, to decrypt the container image and run it as a Kubernetes workload. So we did, we did all this, and at some point we had this attestation report, and we were thinking, well, we need to set in somewhere uh, to get this key uh, to some hypothetical entity that will parse this attestation report and verify it and test it, appraise it, and send us some key back so that we can decrypt our container image and move on and, and run our container workload. And this is where we started to realize that this was a very special space. Attestation services, uh, it's, it's something that uh, kind of the elephant in our confidential computing room. We don't really talk about it. We assume it's working. And today I want to talk about this and what we're doing in confidential containers to try to, try to simplify this space. Uh, this is the definition from, uh, for confidential computing from the, uh, the, this, one of the CCC white paper. And I think um, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, we're looking again at the, at the node side. How do we protect memory? How do we actually measure things? How do we do measure boot and everything? Um, but if we only think about uh, confidential computing as a way of protecting memory, um, we're losing the main point, I think, of confidential computing. Because we're not actually, um, uh, we, we, we don't have a way to trust who generates and use th this memory that we're trying to protect. And this is the whole point of attestation and verification. And basically, confidential computing without attestation and verification is not really confidential. Uh, you generate a lot of data, you protect it, but you have no idea who is using it, and you, you cannot trust this, those entities. So, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we've been talking a lot about the node side, how to protect the guest, how, how, to, well, uh, how to run the guest, uh, but there's this other side of the equation that we also need to solve. This is our main focus, as I said. We'll, we've been talking about a lot about this, this part of the confidential computing space. Um, how do we build a guest kernel? How do we uh, uh, harden this guest kernel? Uh, how we, do we get an evidence? Uh, there's been talk about the, uh, the dice attestation flow, and this was mostly about how do you generate a, a report? How do you uh, from from a, from a guest uh, from a guest workload from a guest TDM or CDM, whatever the uh, terminology is? How do you generate this this uh, device identity? And well, basically, this is our main focus. And I think what we tend to forget is that there's some magic box out there in the cloud somewhere or even in the same node as where you're running your workload that is doing stuff for you. Uh, you send this evidence that you put so much effort into generating, and this magic box sends you something back, a protected resource that you want to use for decrypting your, your hard drive, uh, decrypting your container image, establishing a secure channel between you and some other services. But this is, this is what we tend to think about when we think about confidential computing. And this magic box here is humongous. It's pretty big and it's very difficult to interact with. This is our experience in the, uh, that, we, that, we see, that we saw in the uh, Confidential Continuous Project. This magic box is called the relying party, or this is what the IATF uh, tends to call it. And basically, that's the high level flow, and this is how we see it again. Uh, we have this TVM or the, the CVM, the Confidential Virtual, uh, virtual Machine, generates an evidence, send it to this uh, relying party, get something back, a secret. Everything works. Actually, not that easy. The relying party, first of all, is going to have to verify what you send it. So there's another entity that 
works with the relying party, which is called the verifier. And the relying party forwards the evidence to the verifier, which responsibility is, responsibility is to actually verify the, um, the evidence. If the evidence is verified, authenticated, attested, then it sends attestation results to the relying party. And based on those attestation results, the relying party decides if it wants to inject the secret back to the TVM or not. So this magic box is already getting more complicated with this, but it's not the end of it. Uh, the verifier uh, has, needs some way to actually verify the attestation results, or the, uh, sorry, the, the evidence that it gets from the relying party. So there's yet another entity, which is called the uh, a reference values provider, that kind of holds the golden values, the measurements that you're gonna verify your attestation uh, evidence against. So this reference value provider is, uh, if uh, uh, the verifier talks to, to this entity to actually get the golden values and be able to make a comparison or some sort of comparison, uh, a full comparison or a partial comparison between the evidence and those golden values. So you have yet another entity uh, that use reference measurements to talk back to the verifier. Not the end of it. This reference value provider needs to be fed with actual reference values. Where are those reference values coming from? Well, this is your kernel measurement. This is your OVMF measurement. This is your initRD measurement. This is your kernel command line measurement. This is all your measurement. This is everything that you actually built as artifacts of your confidential virtual machine. So that gets back to the supply chain. How do you generate your artifacts that are going to, to be actually running your confidential guest? So we have now this TVM supply chain, which is an entire new problem for us that actually generates value and you need to trust this, this supply chain. So that's another, that's another question. How do you trust the supply chain? When you generate a kernel that you're gonna run as a guest kernel on your confidential VM, how do you trust that this kernel has been built properly? You get measurements back and you, and you get notation evidence back from your, from your hardware, then you compare those two values, but how do you trust one and how do you trust the other? So this whole supply chain question is also another problem, problem that we're trying to solve. And this, this supply chain somehow fed signed reference values into the reference value provider. So the reference value provider gets signed values, signed reference uh, uh, values, that it needs to verify against a trusted entity. It could be the, the supply chain owner or someone else. It's not the end of it. The verifier gets reference values from the reference value provider, but it also needs to build the attestation models. It also needs to map that to policies. You want to, uh, you, basically the attestation result is a, is a, is a function of the reference values and policies that the, that the vendor is going to fed into the verifier. So you have policy for saying, yes, the, the attestation evidence is okay, but for this specific workload, I'm only going to allow this specific set of resources. So the results are yes, we're good, we can, we can move forward, only if you ask me this specific set of resources. So this is kind of, this is kind of the policy that you, that you, that you can fed into the verifier. So, Typically, uh, I don't know, a high-level policy that you can think about is uh, I'm going to let this, uh, this, uh, only this set of encryption keys to be provisioned into this, this specific guest workload as reported by the attestation evidence. They match against a set of reference values and the, the, the policy that the member gave me says yes, they match and this is the only, the only key that you can fit, that you can provision the, 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 the CVM with. So the, this whole simple hand wavy relying party box magic box that we had there it's a lot more complex than, than we, we we thought about and it's it's complex in the sense that it's it's very difficult to interact with all those flow there that you see um they're not extremely well defined there's a lot of fragmentation in that space and i'm going to go through all this to understand where this fragmentation is coming from First of all, you, your confidential virtual machine is generating an attestation evidence and everyone is happy with this. And as I said, we work very hard to make sure that this actually works nicely and that we can trust this. How do you send this evidence to the, to the relying party? What is this, the format of, of this evidence? So those are two basic questions. 
when you get this evidence, and this is really the first problem that we faced when, when doing confidential containers, we're getting an evidence from, from SNP or from TDX or from, from PF. How do you send it to, to where? What is, what is the interface to send it somewhere? And we realized that if you want to send it to Alibaba's at the station service, you're going to have to follow a given protocol. If you want to send it to Azure, you're going to follow another protocol. And if you want to, to send it to iCycle, uh, Intel's TDX uh, at station service, you're going to follow yet another protocol. So each and every one of those services are, in the best case, service specific. In the worst case, they're service, manufacturer, vendor specific. So the combination of all protocols that you need to support as a, as a, a confidential virtual machine implementation, as a workload, are exponential. Then the format of the evidence, obviously, is, well, each and every vendor out there has its own format. And by own format, I really mean it's not an, a format that en encapsulated in some sort of definition of this format. It's a raw format that the, the, the vendors give you, and this is what you're supposed to send to, to your reliant party. So both the, the protocol on how you send the, the evidence and the format of the evidence is completely, well, depending on the vendor, depending on the manufacturer, depending on the, on the, on the reliant party that you're going to use, they're completely different. Then the secret that you get back from this relying party is also how do you get back? How do you get that back? How do you parse this as a as a workload? As a, I mean, our customers, the customers that are going to use the confidential computing hardware, they're going to receive a secret back. What, how do they know to parse it? What what does it mean to them? Completely depends on the on the on the relying party and the attestation service that they're going to use. Then on the very far side. Um, the verifier actually needs to talk back to the, to the manufacturer. The verifier gets the attestation evidence, and it's typically signed with a key that is rooted back into a manufacturer certificate. And it needs to talk back to the, the, the manufacturer. Uh, when you get a TDX uh, evidence, you need to talk back to somehow Intel's uh, 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 key generation service to verify that, yes, it's been signed by a key that you can trust. So the verifier needs to plug into a set of manufacturer-specific implementations. If you, want, if you want yourself to implement an attestation service, you're going to have to face all of this. For each and every TE that you want to support, you're going to have to implement specific protocols to talk to your manufacturer back. Uh, the format of the policies that the, the, the policies that I talked about that you're going to that you can fed the, the verifier uh, with, those are also uh, uh, completely different based on what the verifier implementation expects. If you're running iCycle or the Intel TDX uh, attestation service or SGX attestation service, you're going to use a certain set of format, a policy format, if they call it policies. Um, everything is, is different depending on the manufacturer. And on the end flow, um, how, does, how does the, um, um, the supply chain that generates your uh, artifacts, the thing that you're actually going to run on your workload, your kernel, your unit RD, your OVMF binary, how does this supply chain feed your reference value provider? Uh, um, what's the format? What do we use? What's the protocol to, for those two entities to talk, uh, to, talk uh, to each other? This is, this is defined, but for each and every uh, attestation service, again, it's different. So we have a lot of uh, questions here. We have a lot of question mark, and we have a lot of fragmentation. And yeah, platform enabling, uh, basically everything that we talked about this morning is only one piece of the equation. There's a very large one that we never th talked about that is completely we hand wave about it, about it basically, and we, we just assume that it's going to work. But all the effort that we put on platform labeling are useless if we don't fix the other, the other side of the equation. That's, that's what the message that I want to carry here. Um, the interfaces, the protocol, the, the manufacturer inter interactions for the whole attestation flow is very fragmented. Um, it's usually manufacturer and cloud service specific. And I, I want to call out that there's a, 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 a a group in IATF called RATS that is trying to build specification and start standardization for, for uh, the attestation service. So there's an ongoing effort from the IATF to, to actually um, uh, standardize this. And really plumbing, basically the, the, the problem that we're facing here is that 
platform generation evidence. That's cool. And we work really hard on this. But plumbing this evidence on any given attestation service is very challenging. And I, I, can, I can talk about it by experience. We try to plumb the evidence that we get from a confidential container workload into any given attestation service. It's very difficult. You need to have a custom implementation as a client for each and every attestation service that you want to talk to. So what is our approach to this? Um, we're trying to, um, well, our approach is basically trying to fix that problem by implementing something that is generic and open. Uh, we want to have generic and open interfaces, and we want to build a, an attestation service that is pluggable for each and every vendor to plug, for example, their verifier implementation. So we have a um, we, we are defining a, a, a relying party protocol, the protocol that as a as a as a uh, CVM as a cloud uh, uh, sorry as a confidential virtual machine workload, you're going to talk to and you're going to send your evidence to, uh, and you're going to get a, a response back with a secret, uh, with a protected resource. We are defining a generic uh, manufacturer agnostic uh, protocol for basically uh, fixing the problem of how do I send an evidence. And how do I get a, uh, a secret back over some standard protocol like HTTPS and, and, and JSON web uh, structures? So this uh, KBS protocol is basically trying to solve that issue. How do you send? How do you authenticate against a reliant party? Then send uh, an evidence uh, to the to this reliant party and get a secret back. All this into uh, a generic, open, manufacturer agnostic. Um, we are um, advocating for hardware agnostic evidence format. There are currently, uh, to my knowledge, two efforts to, to do that. Um, the, the, we talked about DICE uh, earlier this morning, and the, the TCG DICE specification uh, defined also an, an X509 uh, extension for carrying an, an evidence for, uh, um, attestation unit. It's very generic, uh, it allows for yeah. any hardware manufacturer yeah. to yeah. use it. And basically carry your evidence, uh, uh, your attestation evidence, as a, uh, a certificate extension. So you send the evidence that you send to your relying party is basically a certificate with an extension carrying the actual measurements and the, the algorithm. Uh, our attestation service is we're trying to make it very uh, pluggable. So for if you want to uh, have this attestation service interact with uh, uh, ICFL, for example, with uh, the uh, EAA, which is Alibaba's attestation service, with Azure attestation service. You can basically plug that into the interfaces that we provide for verifying your attestation. And the, um, the, the reference value provider service, uh, we're trying to also make it manufacturer agnostic uh, and have it depend on modern and open source supply chain architecture, basically. Uh, the one that's currently dominant, which is in total, and that generates SLSA uh, 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 provenance. If you, if you have a supply chain that follows this format, we're going to be able to interact with this. So, okay, I'm going to move forward. And I'm, yeah, here I'm basically calling out for standardization. Uh, and I'm Basically, describing how those all those question marks could be solved by following a few of the of the of the of the specification and and protocols that I just talked about, and I want to call out for simplification. And we have a lot of people here working on uh, for hardware manufacturers, defining maybe the next generation of confidential computing hardware. And here we can start thinking about making the next uh, confidential computing software stack simpler uh, by simplifying the interfaces between between the TVM and the relying party and by simplifying the interface in between the relying party and the supply chain. And basically, if you look at this very complex picture, you can simplify it by doing this. You have this giant box, which is an attestation service that you fit an evidence into and some reference value coming from a supply chain. If you basically follow those few protocol, uh, the, the KBS protocol that I just talked about, which is just a proposal. And I uh, encourage everyone in, in this room to go and, and look at this protocol and, and comment and tell us if it's generic enough for supporting 
as many as you use case, as many uh, attestation use cases as possible. If you use a dice or an uh, entity attestation token format for your evidence, if you send a, a JSON web formatted uh, uh, token or key for your uh, uh, provi uh, a provision uh, secret, and if you use something like Intoto that generates VLSA provenance uh, for your uh, reference value, just by doing this, basically you could have a confidential virtual machine uh, being able to interact with much more attestation services that we can do today. So that's my call out for this, uh, for this presentation. We're out of time, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's time for the last question for one question. Over there. This whole right hand side, why does it have to be dynamic? Why can't you just attach a, a hash and a certificate to the kernel in D and every other thing that is? I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't hear the, the beginning of your question, sir. Why is the right hand side of your graph dynamic? Why why do you why, why can't we just attach static? Uh, the right hand side of this yes. of this, this this diagram here? Yes. Uh, because you want you want I mean. Your, 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 all your artifacts are in, in, that are going to be running on the confidential virtual machine are going to be generated somewhere in a supply chain that some, some, sometime you fully control, or sometime you don't fully control, but you want to be able to trust. Right. So, so let's say that you, you generate a kernel, and once you generate it, you sign it, then it, you don't who is, need who to... is you? Well, whoever generates the kernel signs the kernel, right? I mean. You... Right, so every every artifact, every you artifact once, that you're going to you run in, it, in, in, and then you just check the signature locally without going out to some other service. It's it's not only about it's not only about uh, signing the artifacts. It's also about uh, verifying that all the steps that you had to go through to generate those artifacts are actually the one that you expect. It's not only um, only about signing something and 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 verifying unless you you can actually provide a fully reproducible build of your entire confidential virtual machine which I think is far away from anything that we can do today. If you can't, provide, if you can't have this guarantee, unless you have a very simple workload, if you, you usually cannot provide this guarantee, what you want, to, what you want to ver be able to verify is that all your build steps have been followed exactly as you expect. So you start from a, a, a source a code that you can verify, it, and then you build it exactly in the same way that you expect. And you sign the, the generated artifact, and you have the guarantee that not only your, uh, your artifact is signed by something, something that you trust, but the, it's been generated by following the exact step that you, that you want to follow. So this is the, this is the role of the, of the uh, of like in Toto, for example, will give you that, that, that feature. You, you give it a manifest, a build manifest. It's not only about which source code I'm gonna use and who is gonna sign it. It's, it's about how do you go from this source code to an actual binary? Which steps uh, uh, I'm supposed to follow and which actors are going to be follow, um, are going to be pushing the buttons to actually do the build and you you have a, a guarantee that you have a, 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 at the end you get a, a prominence that's that's called a prominence which is a signed manifest showing you each and every step that you went through to generate the artifact that you signed so you can trust the entire supply chain okay i think it's time to uh, wrap this discussion up thanks thank you, thank you.